Hello and welcome to December and the 29th episode in A Year Gardening following my exploits in the garden through the year of 2020. Now you may notice something has changed here behind me and uh, that is where I've just put down this new bit of deck. It's made out of some reclaimed timber and I'm going to be uh, putting a little bit of um, wood preservative on there just to make sure that it uh, is protected over the winter. I've still got a lot to do. I've got a handrail and things to build and a palisade along the side and a protection palisade along the front here. But that will be something that I'll be doing next year. Now in today's show, we're going to be looking at the alpine plants that I got from you garden and I potted on a couple of weeks ago and to see how they're progressing. I'll also show you my lavender seedlings, how they're coming on and getting ready to go out for next year. We're going to be potting on the uh, wallflower seedlings into some uh, larger pots and growing those on for next spring as well. We're also going to be putting in some tulip bulbs and we're going to be cleaning our tools. So there's a lot to do in this show today and I think I'd best get started. Hello, and today I'm back in the greenhouse. Oh, let's grab a chair. And I'm putting some of my wallflowers into plugs, some more of my wallflowers into plugs. And we're going to get these plants growing on ready for next spring and the early flowers they will give us. And I've got probably around about 400 to get planted out, so there's a lot to do. But all I'm doing is I'm just using my trusted plant marker and then lifting individual plants if I can. Tease the roots away. Out into the soil here, and they will grow on in these little plugs. And all I'm doing is just taking some of the compost from here and just topping it up around the top of the plug. And then, when we've got a tray nice and full, like that, we're giving it a bit of a water. Let's get the uh, spray lance here. drink onto these plants so they get a nice good start into these new plugs. And we'll just keep an eye on these over the next few months before they get planted out outside. Well that's those few pots completed with some of our scarlet better wallflowers. I did say that whilst I was down the greenhouse, I would um, show you those little plug plants that came in the post the other week. So, um, hmm. let's have a quick look at those and see how they're getting on. We'll bring them out from here. Well, it does look like we could be losing one, but it is a still green plant. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. But all in all, from the size that they were in those little plugs, that's doing exceptionally well, that little beauty. Very, very well indeed. Um, right there, that's the erodium. Yes, lovely. So I'm very pleased with the way they're coming on. And also we've got the uh, little seedlings that uh, I planted out in the pots a few months ago. Oh. I'll just grab a couple out and uh, you can see they're now coming on quite lovely. When I get to plant these out in the spring, they're going to make a really big impact along the bank of the stream. Now another little thing I will show you, I made a little hanging frame for the hanging baskets that I'm... Uh, overwintering in here and uh, let me just grab the camera 
So what we have here, um, you can see a little metal uh, frame here, just running back and fixed onto the uh, frame where I grow my plants. And that's big enough to hang two, maybe three hanging baskets throughout the winter. And we're just gonna see what they do for a nice little bit of color they'll bring. I'm also gonna show you my um, geraniums here uh, because they're absolutely loving it in here and they're coming on very, very nicely. And they're just giving me that little bit of winter color and joy that we need at this time of year. Another little job that I decided to get on with. This uh, is a garden table that I was given a couple of years ago along with some benches. And the top of it had completely rotted away. It was getting really, really bad. So I've taken all the top off, put in some new timber supports on the ends and across the middle and filled and repaired the wood where it was rotting away underneath. Once that dries, I'm then gonna put some uh, reclaimed timber slats along the top, cut them to shape, and we'll have a table again which will last us a good few years. And I'll show you how that goes on later. Well, here I am back at the uh, bank of the stream where I'm going to be planting some bulbs for colour in the early new year. So we'll have some nice tulips at about Easter. So the ground, as you remember from a couple of weeks ago, is well freshly prepared. So this should be nice and easy to plant in. You can get a nice plug out there. And with these tulips, I want them fairly deep so that we get nice strong stems. And I'm gonna plant them into nice groups. I just release the soil back over the top here. And this will really give us a nice shot of colour early in the year, which is what we need. Remember when you're planting your bulbs to get them the right side up in the ground, pointy side up is always the best way of doing it because then they will grow. Nice and deep. I'll now get all the rest of these in here and I should have a lovely display next year. And I'm gonna put some stakes in the ground just to mark so I know where they are. You may remember the summer planting potatoes that I put into this area here, the Pentland Javelins. Well, I'm afraid they haven't done very well. In fact, they've done worse than not very well and we've lost a lot. So I've dug those up on for the compost heap and that's it's just put down to bad luck but what i am going to do now i'm going to show you the new raised bed that i started last year and i'm going to be planting some garlic in that well this is the uh, new bed that i built last year and we put some cardboard and some old bits of rubbish and some compost in there and we've basically got a rather nice tilt here it's a bit of a mixture of soil but I'm going to plant my garlic in there now so I'm just going to make a little row across here just dig that out and it's actually quite a nice composition on this soil it's not too bad at all but we get these in just a couple of inches deep. There we go, I've got some clothes in my pocket. And we'll just pop those in here. So some nice Spanish garlic, and I'm gonna pop them in about four inches apart. One row there. I've got enough in my pocket for another row as well. So I'll Get ourselves a second row here. Look at that. That's not bad. Since it's only gone in last year, there's some good fertilizer and things all mixed in here. Let's get the 
other clothes out here. Pop those in the same. Well, that's 10 for 10 plots. I'm going to get some cones and just mark the end of these rows and some markers and then I'll fill them in. Oh, well, there we go. That's the first of next year's crop planted. Well, today it's time for a little bit more cleaning for overwintering and I'm just cleaning out my pots. All I've got is some nice warm water a little bit of disinfectant and these have all got to be nicely cleaned ready for storing over winter it's all right when you've got three or four pots but I've got around about 150 to get through so this is a second clean through I've already done some and they're in store down the garden all the time I've got plastic pots, if I keep them clean and keep reusing them, it's not putting plastic back into the planet. I'm just using them because I already had them. Now I don't buy new plastic pots. I want to get fibre pots. And they are compostable, but these ones are not. So these have to be looked after and reused all the time. They've got some life in them. And we'll be growing lots of plants in these next year. In fact, I'll be putting the first of my seeds in in two or three weeks time for the late spring flowers and also for my early veg because if I can get an early lot of peas and beans going, we'll be very, very happy. So uh, I'm just gonna carry on getting these clean and then uh, I'll do some tool maintenance and tool cleaning with you. Well at this time of the year I like to clean down the tools that I'm not using and put those away for the winter. So I've uh, got my lawn edger here which is seen a lot better days but I'm just going to give that a nice little clean off here take the soil off it it's a little bit of a state at the minute haven't cleaned it last time I used it which is very poor of me it just takes the soil off there just give that a little bit of a rub down on there take the last of that off oh that's nice oh, that's good and then I'll move this out of the way got to look after the edge on these so I'll just take sharpening stone and a little bit of oil on there and we're just going to give this a tidy up on its edge Take the rust out of the way. That'll make it a little bit sharper for next year when we're cutting into the edges of the grass as well. Just give it that lovely edge. I'll do this to my tools every year. Just to give it that nice clean on there. Then I'll just give it a little bit of a dry off on here. Then all I've got to do is get some oil on my rag. Just work that in on here because there's a 
a tool that goes rusty, we just need to put a little bit of oil on there. Then I'll put some brown paper around that. And that will go and live in the shed. And that will be ready for next year. The other type of tool I've got, if you remember, are my stainless steel tools. And I've just been doing some digging with these, so they're quite dirty at the moment, but these don't need the oil, they don't need the sharpening, they just need the clean off. And we do like to keep them clean. Something really pleasant about a good looking set of garden tools. Just taking all that off of there. Well, that's ready to go away and be used again. I'll be using that again next week. And we're just, whilst we've got it here, we get some of the crud off of this fork as well. our tools and then we don't have to replace them at all because they are in a good nick so we just give that a little bit of a wipe off here and that's ready to be put away as well and I will be doing my pruners and my shears and my other bits and pieces later on today but for now I've got to go and get a load more pots and get those all cleaned up and whilst I'm doing that we might as well sum up today's show and well just about the year well there we are that's the end of episode 29 and the last episode that I will be filming in a year gardening for the year of 2020 we'll be back in a couple of weeks time at the end of the year with a review of the year but just as a little recap I mean the things that We've actually achieved in the garden this year the new layout and design of the front garden and the shrub border which are really coming on very nicely and that front garden gave such a wonderful display of wild flowers this year the redesigning of what was the utility garden into the courtyard garden and we've had some lovely times in there this year and building the stream through the back garden the lovely crops of vegetables that we've had. So all in all, it's been a very, very productive 2020, despite all of the problems and challenges that the year has thrown at us. But the main thing that I've got from this year is the enjoyment of your company and your comments and the feedback that I've had from you. And I thank you so much for that. In today's show, We've been doing a lot of things to prepare for next year. And as now we have a, a vaccine that's just starting to be uh, given out for the uh, coronavirus, it does seem that we could be seeing light at the end of the tunnel and some sort of normality will be back with us next year. And I'm really, really looking forward to being able to spend some time with people. And it can't really come soon enough. But I have had the pleasure of not just your company but of the garden throughout the year and I know that it's just going to go from strength to strength to strength as we go forward. I do have plans for a second series of A Year Gardening and I will update that on Facebook when we near the time. So it just leaves me to uh, wish you all a very very Merry Christmas and enjoy it as much as you can while still being safe. I hope that you've enjoyed this past year as much as I have and my love goes to all of you and all of your families at this time of joy. It just leaves me to uh, grab a little glass and today I have a rather splendid golden ale in my grandpa's glass and so I'll just leave you with a few words, which is to say, safe, 
stay happy, be kind to each other. Happy gardening. Cheers. Come us to love us, to help 